All right, so we got our open in the market today. Looks like the Nasdaq over the weekend looks like it opened up down about one percent. We're sitting here at about 0.4 percent down now. So hitting our middle Bollinger Band line, we'll see if maybe this is a place where we find some some support in the markets. Um, not too much green on the actionable list. United Airlines down 12% on, well, all the airlines are going to be crushed today on Warren Buffett. Restoration Hardware down a bunch today as well. Under our trend then, let's see if that lasts a long time or we're able to bounce back. I mean, it's dependent on the market though. All right, so Apple ended Friday, pretty ominous day down uh, towards the lower part of the range. Holding the moving averages though is pretty decent. Microsoft's holding nice and tight. Their earnings came and gone, didn't really do too much. Google may as well just call themselves Google and just put the E on there and get it over with. They just keep extending their name. And Google, pretty pretty normalized up here too. Oh, my eyes are bad. That point seven percent. All right, that was a little bit less less than that, but that's what it is. All right, so point seven percent down for the Nasdaq. Point six six. Let's go check on our global watch list. A bit more green up here, but we're still not a very not a very green market right now. Uh, Warren Buffett divesting all of his airline holdings, meaning he sold all of his airline stock. Kind of freaking some people out, especially those in the airline industry, which is why your, your bottom three in the global are all airlines. Hertz rent a car. Looks like uh, really close to making new lows. 3.18 so we're pretty much at the low at the prior low and the way this volume looks i'm not quite sure it's stopping down here <clears throat> i think this is the um i think it was hertz has said that they may go bankrupt Way filing for bankruptcy, yeah. Oh yeah, auto stocks. I didn't think about the, the auto stocks component to that. That would be pretty bad. You figure Hertz rent a car probably buys several thousand vehicles a year. Boeing down here as well. Is that negative 1.7? See, that's a really bad earnings report. 1.67 estimated with two point, negative 2.3. That's a really bad earnings report. This one, not so much. Both, lo both lost money, but at least they thought they were going to. All right, let's see what's leading today. Uh, race, which is Ferrari leading today's, oddly enough. INSG coming down off their highs. Earnings are coming up here. 
five, six. This is in Seago, if I'm not mistaken. Had a huge run. Just a massive, massive run. Looks like profit taken in a market that doesn't have a lot of it. All right, take two interactive. Oh, wait, that's not, no, TTWO, okay. Uh, ring looking pretty good right there. Lots of green action there. Regeneron, Roku. EXEL. Uh, Tesla today, positive, which is good. Massey, still holding really well at the highs there. Netflix up here in a pullback situation. So these are these types of uh, bases like this usually pretty good to enter off of. Once they start to break out and see some, uh, here it was pretty nice. See some tightening price action, and then we start breaking highs here at the three eighty level, give or take three eighty three, popped up to four fifty. So we can see some nice sideways action here, which we are, we are seeing some nice sideways action. Then uh, break of this trend line here. Upward and onward. Tilray's up a little bit. Nothing's up too much, though. We're not getting... Uh, looks like Warrior Coal coming back. 5%. Almost 6 now for some reason. Earnings, earnings. Or is that a dividend? It's a dividend play. Some analysts raising price targets. Strange. Very beaten down stock. Hey, what's up, Muhammad? Yeah, so kind of a non-starter today. We'll see if we get healthier as we go, but so far, <clears throat> so far, still see a red. Uh, market did gap down, and was kind of waiting to see what's going to show up. So a few more green on the list here, which is good. But airlines really taking a beating today. Look at that volume this morning on the five-minute chart. Just a huge amount of volume. Space, oh, down 10%. So they're not really. Oh, they undercut on Friday. Okay. So restoration hardware with a big gap down over the weekend, about 4%. Whoops. Looks like coming back uh, to the 50-day moving average. I guess we'll see if that acts as some support. Hopefully it would, right? You'd think that would. So bouncing a little bit this morning. We'll see if that continues throughout the day. That would be definitely encouraging. Market's pausing at that middle Bollinger Band. And uh, yeah, so definitely slow start. Uh, in terms of news, so from a tactical perspective, we're still kind of pulling back from our, our you know, run from the last month or so. <clears throat> and kind of a uh, news perspective. China is back in the mix, which is unfortunate. Trump talking about doing more stuff to China based on coronavirus and lack of transparency. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Not sure if that's going to mean tariffs. Not sure what that's going to mean. We know Trump loves his tariffs. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, we talked about second second shoes to drop. That definitely could be a second shoe to drop if he's going to start fighting with China 
overtly again. They were making kissy face before, and maybe that'll be put on pause or stopped altogether. But that's a concern. Obviously, uh, coronavirus still out there. Some U.S. states opening. Let's take a look at... Um, there we go. So some states have actually opened up in the U.S. Um, first weekend of open beaches in San Diego passes without major incident. See, this is going to be such crazy information. No matter which way you slice the data, and you guys know this from analyzing charts, you can find a bullish or bearish case. So, see like here's when Texas coronavirus cases spike as state reopens. So the funny thing is this, is that if you're exposed to the coronavirus, it takes between 2 and 14 days to actually, you know, show symptoms. Um, I believe you can show symptoms sooner than you, or I'm sorry, you can test for the virus sooner than you, you can show symptoms. So it's hard to know exactly <clears throat> what this spike means. Is this old cases just testing new? Or is this actually, you know, people opening and then getting sick, new people getting sick. So it just lots of dependencies here on these numbers. Numbers instantly sparked a fresh round of second guessing the governor about decisions to let stores, restaurants, theaters, malls open at 25% capacity Friday. Looking at a completely different set of numbers when it comes to tracking the pandemic. Yeah, see, there you go. So matters which one you track. He makes decisions about how quickly to restart the Texas economy. State's infection rate, the ratio of positive cases to tests conducted, and the hospitalization rate. I don't know if you can go by hospitalization rate. That's going to be individual. Okay, so he's opening up the state about 25%. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Man, it looks like we weren't in a lull. Hey, look, seven-day MA. <laughs> see what a seven-day EMA looks like on that one. Be like this. It'll be past the highs probably. Yeah, I wonder what causes that. Yeah, maybe there's more tests. Uh, fun, fun, fun. Even when, even when you know, quote unquote, life and death is at risk, there's still politics. So we'll see what that leads into. But in terms of the markets. Uh, Much of the same. UAL basically taking the top spot to the downside today with the news of Warren Buffett divesting all of his airline holdings. Wonder what else he's divested. I'm not even sure I like his rationale, to be honest with you. From a long-term holder, it doesn't make any sense to me. Hold on a sec. Okay.
All right, let's check out some uh, some IBD stuff. Let's see what their paper said. Haven't really looked at the IBD paper in a long time. Not much to do this morning as the market's kind of in a in a uh, shift of momentum away from the bulls towards more consolidation. Oh, here we go. Warren Buffett dumps stock, but you know, despite bargains galore. I wonder if he's actually scared, not of stocks, but of the coronavirus and stuff. slowed stock repurchases of his own company. Hmm. We're not playing. We're not playing, oh, goody, goody, everything's going to hell. Let's plunge 100% of the reserves into buying businesses. Wow. That seems oddly strange. That was uh, Charlie Munger, by the way. It's not Warren Buffett. That quote. The phone is not ringing off the hook. Oh. So they're wanting people to ask them to buy them. Hmm. So Buffett did buy a million shares of Delta Airlines after the coronavirus. But then he sold all of it. Huh. Weird. That is a little bit strange that Warren Buffett wouldn't be buying things. We just had everything down 70%. Does that mean he thinks things are still overheated? I don't know. All right, let's take a look at the EIBD. Kegelaw? Oh. All right, let's check out Big Cap 20, see what they got here. So AMD doing pretty good up here towards highs. Netflix obviously into highs. Vive Systems. Vertex, Adobe. Franco Nevada. They're a big cap company? Huh. Service now with a run towards the highs. Not exceeding the highs, though. Morning, Ellie. NVIDIA, Anthem. Amazon, obviously. And Facebook. No Tesla. That's fine. <clears throat> See what they say about the market trend over the weekend. Oh, I thought they were putting the distribution days back on the chart. Pansies. All right. So auto manufacturers, number one, number one sectors, auto manufacturers. That seems weird. I guess everything else is just that obliterated. But that's got to be all Tesla. <laughs> I don't know what else is, what auto manufacturers having a good day. 
Retail Internet, Amazon. Computer Software, MD&D. Hmm. Okay, so soap and I can't see anything. So the blue are the industries up the most, the red are the industries down the most. Oil and gas obviously taking it on the chin as that segment is pretty much destroyed. Telecom service integrated, finance, blank check, not sure what that means. How's auto manufacturing number one and down the most? That is weird. That is super weird. All right, let's check out sector leaders. Very important list, actually. Outperforms the S&P by tremendous, tremendous amounts. Although I'm not sure how that's calculated, to be honest with you. ServiceNow Netflix Lite provides optical communication, photonic products for manufacturing and stuff. Vertex and Zynex. Electrotherapy for pain management and rehabilitation, devi rehabilitation devices, strokes and spinal cord injuries. Hmm. Hmm. Z Y X I. Let's go look at that. All right. Looks like Nasdaq loosely green, at least on the futures. Um, these guys, huh? Yeah, pretty bullish right there. All time highs. Holy crap, look at that. Down basically, they were negative at one point. You, you could, they could have just given you stock. When did they get added to the NASDAQ? This is a new guy. And how is this a sector leader? What's the market cap on this? Um, well, we can 16 times 16. What's that? So 6 times 6 is 36. 136 million? Is my math right on that? 16 times 16. 256 million. That is a. How is this a sector leader? Fifty-five PE debt one percent. That's really good. Sixty-six percent last quarter sales. EPS twenty or thirty-three percent. Last quarter EPS twenty nine. This is a small, small guy. Zynex Z Y X I. Wow. That's a cup and handle. Interesting. Let's add that to the actionable list. ZYXI. Uh, not bad. Very, very. Oh, here's some news. Any more green here? Uh, yeah, decent amount of green. AMD's up, Tesla's up, Roku's up. Regeneron, Okta. All right, let's see what else we're going to find in this paper. That's an interesting... 
I'm not familiar with sector leaders like sub billion market cap. That's way sub billion market cap too. But it's a new world. So IPO leaders. Docu D Dog still and uh banned. Cloud based software powered communications platform as a service. Software-powered communications banned. Okay, trying to well, actually got up on Friday. It already got up. Earnings positive for the first time. It looks like at least appears that way. Uh, breakout here at basically 90. And arguably a fairly high quality stock. It's already up quite a bit. Hey, what's up, Rob? Um, not a tremendous amount. Market's trying to go positive here while we're speaking. So this, this band is looking looking pretty pretty good oh they actually link look at that they got smart 97 composite rating hundred and thirty three percent change last quarter is very good current quarter was estimated negative 125 percent not sure what that's about. Sales 29 is good. Pre-tax margins horrible. 50 day average line barely passes. 400,000 is needed. 2.1 billion market cap. <clears throat> A accumulation distribution rating. And brand spanking new relative strength line. Hmm. Looks pretty good. See, there's some tomfoolery out there with it, but not too bad. So flat on the futures right now. Let's see if we're going to get past that or not. Our buddy ZX, ZYXI. Just one of the most crazy runs, if these numbers are to be believed, down at 15 cents up to 18. That's 100x in like four years. Crazy. ZYXI. Develops yeah, electrotherapy. Zynex. Really good numbers according to the mini chart. Let's see what the... Wow, 65% ROE. Margins good. 26%. Sales of 66 is really good. A minus accumulation, 1.3 up, down volume. Boston Scientific, this is about another one. Let's go look at these guys. Zynex Inc. Prescription TENS units. Oh, okay. We own a, a very generic small TENS unit. What's different about this thing? Well, it's prescription based, so that's kind of a built in customer set, if you will. Neurodyne. May. Oh, this is like two days ago, three days ago. It's a PDF. Let's get open with my editing. LibreOffice software. Uh, let's open it in the browser. Oh, 
Hold on, let me open it in the browser. There we go. <clears throat> okay, non-invasive electrotherapy pain management, TENS unit, 90% of historical revenue. Okay. Zynex, 2% of revenue. I uh, know that option expired on Friday, Rob. Well, Thursday at the close. Or was it Friday at the close? 5-1 was the expiration. Yeah, 5-1, Friday at the close. 15 consecutive profitable quarters, $3.8 million in buybacks, one-time dividend of 7%, $0.07 cents a share. Yeah, Buffett did kill the airlines. Revenue up 66%, income, working capital, cash, no long-term debt. Um... Seventy-five percent gross profit margin. Holy bejesus! I guess there's just a lot of marketing. Requires a prescription and reimbursed by health insurance. About fifteen hundred bucks. Good God, man! So they're taking advantage of insurance company. Which is fine with me. Well, kind of, not really. Um, electrotherapy for pain management. What if my wife would benefit from this? Used for breakthrough pain. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> How would you describe your pain today? Uh, Doc, I would call it breakthrough pain. So you're feeling better? No, no, I'm not. 40 times stronger than 10s. Reduces muscle relaxant use. But what are you going to buy? A $1,500 unit or $20 a month worth of muscle relaxers? Breaks up muscle spasms. Upper back, thoracic back. Cervical pain, my wife has that. FDA clearance approved in February of this year. Looks like obviously in a hospital. Can be used during activities. Did it say that? Oh, yeah. Blood volume monitor. Okay, increased footprint with additional direct sales representatives for recurring revenue streams, generate consistent net earnings. So they like their product. Now they're ramping up sales, and I guess they're doing okay in terms of their product, at least according to their salesy newsletter thing here. Well, I guess it depends on the activity too, Rob. Joining the company in 2020 brings 20 years experience as an exceptional level of expertise in med tech device sales, VP of sales at Wisconsin Med, where she led strategic marketing issues. Um, So this guy joined Chief Operating Officer. So they've had a, a change in management, it, not top, top, but the COO and the Chief Vice President of Sales, uh, brand new, basically 2019, it's last year. Oh, listen on the NASDAQ. So they were on the pink sheets before. I want a list of uh, new additions to the NASDAQ. Oh, that You know what? That's kind of got to be one of the... That's got to be one of the key things is being added to the NASDAQ if you're a stock. 
That's not quite what I was looking for. But you guys get what I'm saying. Wow, revenue is doing excellent. And estimate Q2, obviously that's going to be higher. Even with coronavirus, it looks like. Earnings, um, they're not going past Q2. Seems a little strange. But definitely in long-term breakout mode here. Volume doing very good. And some contact information. Hmm. All right, so definitely an interesting, um, definitely an interesting company. I'm actually a little bit more interested in finding out about stocks that are added to the NASDAQ. Cryptocurrency. It's IPO calendar. I don't want you to give me quotes. They have prices on this many coins? That seems... That's new. Why is Dogecoin on here? If you want to be taken seriously, don't add Dogecoin. There's a lot of other cryptos out there. You don't have to add Dogecoin. All right, let's get off this page. Oh, it's current market activity. Never mind. That's not what I was looking for. Makes sense, though. Um, but I don't want to IPO, though. I just want things coming into the NASDAQ. IPO can be fine, too, but... Okay, how about minus IPO? Hmm, what's this? <laughs> That's true, Rob. Penny stock list. This is <clears throat> you're, you're my key demographic. We're going for now. Oh, it's just I just got to scroll. I didn't notice how much space there was there. When was this done? They're talking about decimalization. I was actually around for that, believe it or not. I remember when that happened. I thought it was weird that they priced it in eighths to begin with. You want a plan? You came to the wrong channel, Ellie. We're all about feel good and and uh, and tens devices now. It's all about shock therapy. So these guys are a little expensive. So I'm just gonna take this power cord, cut it, strip the wires, and just start poking. That's the plan. My plan, at least. This is not financial advice.
I'll be called real glitchy pretty soon if I start shocking myself with 110. <laughs> Bzz, ah! Talk about emotional swings. What happened, Randy? Did your stop loss get hit? No, I've just been sh shocking myself for the past 35 minutes. That's why I'm sad. Wow, these are all going back to 86. He's citing documents from 86. All right, that's not quite... Interesting company, though, ZYXI, if they're going to have like, if they're going to have um, Blockbuster Salesforce out there, all right, market up 0.2%. So pretty good. Tesla 5%. All right, coming out of some uh, doldrums there. But yeah, if we're going to have, um, if we're going to start shocking people. I mean, that's, that's, you can't argue with that chart right there at all. Look at that cup and handle. My goodness, talk about a long-term turnaround or a long-term trend line. Obviously, it got pretty choppy after that, but now we're up at 18 from 6. That's excellent. Even through coronavirus, that's pretty good. Question is, where can they go? I suppose my wife hasn't heard about them. Wearable TENS devices, basically. Um, okay, so our actionable list is now mostly green, which is a, kind of a relief. Delta, oh, look, the airlines are bouncing up. They've covered about half of their loss from... Wow, look at that volume. That's pretty dang bullish. Um... That's a bull flag right at this bottom. That's crazy. Are all the airlines looking like this? Skywest, how about how about Delta? Yeah, Delta looks similar. Look at all that volume. Everyone capitulating on airlines today, it looks like. How's the daily volume look? Wow! Already almost average, and we're 40 minutes in, 43 minutes into the market. That's crazy. Very, very little downward price progress. Look at it. I mean, it's, it's up a little bit now, but you're looking at like a almost a double bottom entry point here. If you're looking for, uh, yeah, see, that's still 16%. That's crazy. It actually worked out pretty good last time if I would have... Just taking profits up 400%, I would have been really good. <clears throat> Cheering mana to walk. Starbucks not getting happy right there. ZTO coming down. Whoops, what did I just click on? After kind of a, a big run up. Big run up here. A huge pullback day. Uh, could potentially be an undercut and rally entry point if we undercut this, this low right there, which it looks like we have a possibility of doing. So... Um, Here's a stock that's been doing relatively well lately. So there's a decent possibility there of it, uh, of a potential entry. Got to wait for the rebound, though. Transportation. Oh, we're way down there. Uh, 
Uh, actually, transportation index almost looking like a, a bottom bottoming type of a play. If it, if it can get a nice rebound here, we're trying to break over the opening range as we speak. Market up uh, 0.3738% now, which is pretty good. Tesla extending to the upside. RH positive, that's down 6%. Wow. How's that looking on the daily? Right back against our trend line. Um, since it's got about a 6% risk on this right now, if you're looking for an entry. Uh, I saw it today, Rob. I didn't see it on Friday. Yeah, it's about 7%, 6.5%, 7 stop loss now on Restoration Hardware. But in the daily chart, it's in a pretty manageable position trying to get back above the 50-day moving average. This could just be a, a scary spike. Past couple of days volume, not too bad, much less than average. For some reason, the colors on my monitor, it's just too much white on my screen. And this is too dark. 0.45 for the NASDAQ. So bouncing off that middle line, we talked about the Bollinger Bands and hopefully it bounce off the middle line. And so far, we appear to be doing just that. Domino's Pizza, 1%. Holding pretty good down here towards the lows. Earnings came out, and we haven't fallen apart too badly. 50-day moving average. Huh. Oh, Soxel. Forgot about Soxel for a minute there. Well, all day today, actually. <laughs> uh, looking a lot like Restoration Hardware, except for much higher volume on the sell side. <clears throat> so kind of interesting here for Soxel. Looks like we've been in this little downtrend. The biggest downtrend of this since we started rallying. We'll see if that's going to uh, come back here. 0.56 for the NASDAQ now. So we're kind of marching right back. Volume's pretty good. Can't say it's high, but it's pretty good. We also still have only one distribution day on, on the market. I, I do want to say that. All right, UAL breaking up. We're at 25 and change. Yes, I am mulling a position here, actually. This is under where we got in last time. We never quite got to 35, but the volume today is pretty darn good. I mean, these option prices are still nuts. I don't know. That seems like a little bit too risky for what they're wanting for options right now. I'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens. Tesla 6.37%. All right, Beyond Meat, Okta. There's Take Two Interactive. Not bad. Looks like we kind of stabilized to the downside here so far. Let's take a look at uh, let's look at the cues. Look at the cues. Nothing crazy in terms of volume here. Pretty normalized day. It looks like nothing 
nothing too exaggerated. Uh, and a lot more green stepping into the market here. So our list started out where our green was right about here where DocuSign is on my list and it's just slowly grown throughout the day. <clears throat> Let's take a walk around the middle here, which means I'll never be able to maneuver around. Really? Why? Why go on a directional play like that? Obviously, it's, it's going to be a shorter term thing, but like we're kind of up here in some some choppy areas. We got a couple of couple of, you know, highs up here. Uh, we are finding support at the 685. And if you're not bullish on Tesla, I'm not sure I'd be shorting it still. It's my personal opinion. Just an, you mean the natural undulation that Tesla usually does? Yeah, I can see that. I, I can see that. Undulation of Musk. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he, uh, yeah, he says some crazy stuff, talks about stock price too high. That's a little crazy. And he's, um, hasn't been on a, it's a spring thing. <laughs> Musk is seasonal. <laughs> oh, so space is filing for a secondary share offering. Which is why, why they're down today. Oh, today's May the 4th be with you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is cool. Check this out if you guys are, uh, ah, hold on. I thought this was pretty cool. Off the markets for a second here. This guy says one of his favorite Kobe and MJ moments. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. <laughs> you don't see that a lot in the sports you see like all the fiery moments and stuff but that's pretty cool too the greatest ever to play going at it and enjoying the game that's that's phenomenal that's super cool i like that we see the competition but to see the humanity is pretty amazing out of two guys like kobe and mj that's awesome. That's my heart, man. That's pretty cool. I mean, you know, they're both they're both super competitive guys, but the second the play ends, MJ's up there smiling at him, and <laughs> Kobe's like, "Whatever, dude, get up." <laughs> uh, uh, I was looking for Elon Musk garbage. Damn it! Can't even open Twitter without. <clears throat> F equals what? How did it end up on some Elon troll? This is more entertaining than the stock market. 0 0.25 for the NASDAQ. We sold off a little bit. Yeah, not saying much. Pretty cool picture of a jet engine, though. It's pretty dope. <laughs> uh, 
All right, our Z ZYXI guy is uh, just really extending up here. This is a super impressive, obviously way too extended for entry here, but something's going on here, it looks like. Maybe it's that new sales, sales lady they got going on. Starbucks here, another leg lower. See, this is not a good reaction to earnings. Consecutive down days after earnings. This is a, a negative reaction. Usually kind of sideways, normal reaction is pretty good, but that right there, not so hot. All right, Netflix holding really nice in this consolidation. Probably likely will continue higher uh, at some stage of the game. Service now was right up at highs, and we're holding right up here at highs relatively well. Big earnings move and nice consolidation thereafter. So, a break of this range here could be an entry point for service now. Um, I'm not sure if I consider this a cup and handle. 33, oh, I guess it is a cup and a handle, 33% to the downside. That would be actually a very manageable cup and handle. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful right there. Good earnings play. Daily volume at the bottom is nice. These, these high, volume, high volume days down here. That one. This one. Um... And then look, watch volume quiet up here, and then boom, blast off. Very, very nice price action there for ServiceNow. Not bad at all. I kind of like that. I'm not sure about a traditional breakout. The market is pretty choppy, but ServiceNow showing tremendous amounts of leadership. Starbucks credit downgraded two notches just above junk. That's funny. Ethan. Good morning, little kid. Hi. Half an hour and you didn't say hi to me? That's it. You're fired. Good morning. Morning. Daddy. I heard you playing piano. You already playing piano? I heard you. What you got? Magnet. Should I call you Magneto? <gasps> That'd be a dope Halloween costume. I'll make you Magneto and like throw stuff at you. It'll just like stick. And then have a switch. You can turn it on and off. I do not. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe we'll find some. Maybe we'll find some magnet stuff for you guys to play. Okay. Okay. No, no, not those big ones. Yeah, because they're not that strong. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> that is pretty cool. I kind of like that, Ellie. I'm like, yeah, what if I make the kid a Magneto costume? Give him, like, an electromagnet he could flip a switch at? <laughs> Unless he just leaves it on and walks by some dude's steel chair or bike and goes, -tong. Or I can make an electromagnetic rail gun. He can shoot his candy at people from across the street. Although I guess you can't really electromagnetically charge a candy bar. What's wrong with that? Paper clips. I'm throwing paper clips at him. Anyway. Anyway, 
It's a good idea is all I'm saying. I didn't th you got to give me more, more than two seconds to think my way through an idea, but Magneto for a Halloween costume is pretty awesome. <laughs> we are American, Ellie. So are you now. So get over it. You're American. Go get yourself a Magneto gun. That's what they should call rail guns. Magneto guns. That's absolutely what they should call them. I love it. You're taking all the fun out of everything, Ellie. Gosh. Oh, you're still an alien? Well, then get out of my country. <laughs> Go back to where you came from. And, uh, yeah, none of us are doing our part. Only the rich are doing their only the rich are doing their part. That's it. That's why they get the bailout. Actually, we got checks this time around, so that's kind of cool. Coronavirus. Here's a check. Socks are in slightly into negative territory. Looks like turning around a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, volume's not too bad today. Actually, much diminished from the past two days. Not so much selling pressure. Um, maybe due to, you know, the ramping up of China rhetoric once again. I'll bribe a virus. I got no shame in that game. I'm a virus bribing fool. I do it every every year at flu season. Like, just get my kids sick, okay? I don't want to get sick. My kids can handle it. I'm an old man. <clears throat> How's PayPal doing? They were sitting up towards highs. They're still sitting up towards highs. Yeah, kids can take it. They got Magneto costumes. All right, so market now struggling to stay positive, 0.12%. Be interesting how the day ends today. This is going to be an interesting day. So now I think we're getting back, unfortunately, kind of towards um, things as usual. We're seeing a lot more political infighting. Um, and not even necessarily between Democrat and Republican. It, does, it doesn't seem to be that kind of a split. I'm not quite sure where the split is, but... Um, you know, opening states, not opening states. Yeah, UEL, um, it's probably back into it now, 10, 10%, yeah. It was out of it, now it's back into it, so. I didn't open any positions or anything, I was just exploring. Always exploring. So. Yeah, it's hard, hard to say exactly. You get all that... Looked earlier about some data from opening up states and coronavirus cases, and and uh, as you guys know, look, we look at data every day. You can look at data any number of ways to achieve a result that you want. So any numbers you guys see out there in the news, um, I don't know how you're gonna get you're gonna get viable data. Probably the best viable data is death counts or something. I, even even new cases that's there's like it's like population number of tests number of positives per number of tests and positives per day and deaths per day like it's a it's a fairly complex equation for just a casual consumer of data you have to have a more <clears throat> kind of more concise and pointed way to to look at this stuff and you can only hope the people in power know what they're doing, or at least they're doing the best that they can. No one knows what they're doing. All right, Tesla's still up today, 5%, not doing too bad. Roku, 4.5 sin. Uh, I saw an article about that, but I don't know if it was clickbait or not, Rob, so I just kind of avoided it. <clears throat> Yeah, what, so let's look at that. What's up with that? I think I'm going to get out of here in a little bit, guys. It's kind of been a weird day. I'm tired. Let's 
CDC did not revise down coronavirus deaths. See, it's clickbait. I knew it. I freaking knew it. More Russian news articles. Man, I don't know. I, I really wish that they would start fact-checking news, like seriously. No, the CDC did not revise down the number of deaths. So, yeah, it was clickbait. Clickbait or just more misinformation by Russia. I watched a whole movie on the whole Russian thing. It's some Netflix film. I forget the name. Or it's Hulu. Hulu or Netflix. I forget the name of it. But, um, man, crazy operation. It goes, it goes pretty deep into Putin, pretty deep into what Russia wants to do. And, yes, Trump is in there. I was hoping, you know, it was... He's in there. He's the president, and he's got ties. He's got ties, so he's in there. But um, most of the story was, if you take nothing away, just the, the the Russia part, leave the Trump out of it. Pretty informative as far as what they're trying to do. They're essentially trying to break up NATO so they can build the old Soviet Union back. Is basically what they're trying to do. And uh, all this disinformation, you know, splitting up the the political differences into big, wide gaps and divides. You know, it's pretty much what, what we've heard. They did it in Ukraine. They did it in a couple other countries. Worked really, really well. And it's it's going to take probably longer here, but it, I don't know if, you know, we'll see if we're going to. See if it's going to happen here or not. I hope not. So it definitely looks like it is a false news story. We can check CDC. What? Hold on a second. Is this right? Deaths involving coronavirus disease, pneumonia, and flu reported to NCHS. I'm not sure what, sure what that stands for, but see, this is on the CDC website. So let's look at uh, this last week. So deaths are 26. COVID deaths are 32. Pneumonia deaths are 28. Flu deaths are 67. Let's go to the height of the flu deaths. Oh, wow, they're killing. Well, that's... <laughs> I'm going to say, COVID's killing the flu and death, son. <laughs> oh, horrible. <laughs> that's horrible. Very interesting. COVID actually greatly outpacing flu deaths. What is this real? Is this... Can you take this at face value? If so, then we really should be scared of COVID if this is accurate, if this data is accurate. Then this is obviously a, a very frightening disease. Total COVID deaths, you're looking at, yeah, 6, 7x. Wow. Yeah, they are reporting about about sixty. Is that I think that's globally. This is is that okay? So let's look at some other data. Okay, so worldwide, two hundred forty-eight thousand. Okay. Here they say 68,000. Oh, come on, for crying out loud. Uh, 
So Google has it as 68,000, but this CDC, well, you just, we just saw an article, they said it was fake news. National Center for Health Statistics, that's what NCHS stands for. That's true, Rob, that's true. Hmm. Provisional death counts. So these lag <clears throat> one to two weeks behind. Death certificates take time to be completed. Take an average of seven days to be coded manually. So maybe just clickbait. I don't know, but so they're saying that it looks like um, it just takes a while to process the deaths because their systems suck. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, well, this is May 1st. Can we go back in time? I don't know. Is there a chart? Snopes, where I go for all of my hard-hitting fact-checking news, where they have, where they're trying to sell you trinket necklaces. False. They did not revise it down. <laughs> Worldometer. Yeah, they're blowing up during this whole thing. So total death count, USA, so they got it at 68,000 too. So yeah, so there are different reporting mechanisms. It's not that it was revised lower, it's just different reporting mechanisms. Ah, uh, misinformation campaigns. Two separate data sources that report different measurements. Several weeks for death records to be submitted to NCHS. Yeah, so it's not, there's been no revision. We can lay that one to rest right there. All right, market point 4% right now. Trying to get right back at it. Roku, Tesla, 6%. Service now doing too bad. Well, we deal with the data we have. We deal with the data we have. That's all we can do. All right, so ServiceNow looks like UAL. MindMD. Soxel still hovering in negative territory. Wait, that's Winnebago. At Soxel. So Soxel still hovering here around negative territory. I've always been greatly diminished down here, so hopefully lack of selling pressure. Best case scenario, we can start to see a rebound maybe tomorrow or the next day or something like that. <clears throat> Substantial rebound in Soxel. Um, yeah. 
All right, so we so far we've held a little bit of a sell off and we've come back. Let's see if it's just going to be a double top scenario or if we're going to continue through. Um, a little bit of a bump on volume on that little last five minute candle, so not bad. So not too bad right here. Restoration hardware, 1%. Bouncing off this trend, that could be a potential trade if you're looking at a little pullback by no undercut and rally here, but we have a trend intact and we're loosely trying to bounce out of it on this five minute chart. We've, uh, we've already broken it this morning by a long shot. So a couple potentials down here. And I like this ZYXI. I'd like to know more about them, but all you see is dead cat bounces. All right. Yeah, it's... I think it's more about the open rate at this stage of the game, how fast they can get things reopened safely, because it's just gonna that's what's gonna really do it. And again, the stock market's forward looking, so they're not looking at well, now it's May, so last time we were bottoming down there in March, late March, and we were looking a few you know, a couple months out, two, three months out. If we're still looking two, three months out, what is it what does it look like from now? Does it are, are we still closed or are we more open two or three months from now? Uh, I would argue we're, we're more open two or three months from now. Best case scenario is that you get these states that are opening and they don't see big spikes and there's more confidence built for other states to open. Then we can slowly get back to the normal. And then we have the election just to screw it all up again. Yeah, well... We'll see if they have more stimulus. They appear to be on this whole stimulus thing. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I agree with you. It's not it's not a straightforward path to ultimate success. And I think it's kind of strange that Nasdaq's really close to highs. So if you guys are looking to take profits off the table, um, I don't blame you there. I, I don't know about base blatant shorting though. That's not not really in my I'm not looking at that. I wouldn't be looking at short markets here personally. Individual stocks probably could do that a little bit better, but um, I'm not sure about shorting indexes. I need to see more distribution. We still only have one distribution down the indexes. So, you know, you really can't conflate economies to markets. Those are two different things. <laughs> that is not a direct quote. All right, guys, I think I'm going to get out of here. <clears throat> Go get something to eat. Make sure the kids aren't cons literally eating their electronic devices. They're trying to get closer to them. <sighs> so, all right, guys, have a good one. Stay safe out there. And uh, go short LE shorting Tesla. All right, later.